Zifu Wrath made herself known in this season in an attempt to brainwash an army under her command. Today we will talk about how dangerous these Wrathborn really are despite their appearance in the game, how Cryptoliths could cause mass chaos, guardian infection, and much more. Perhaps we can help each other out, eh? Zifu Wrath is using her high celebrant and those damn Cryptoliths to corrupt Elixney. Found him wandering the reef like a piece of windblown trash. Now, if he ever flies too far from the master, boom. Things were quiet in the solar system until we started getting reports of hive cryptoliths popping up around the area. The tangled shore, the moon, and even the dreaming city. I've gone to the reef hoping to find insight into Kaito's agenda among the cabal there. Instead I found something else. There's a... a strange new presence here. It grows as an organic technology, like a, a small tower. There are cabal gathered around it. Enraptured by something I could not perceive. Perhaps their own desperation or, or madness. The hive structures are called cryptoliths. They spread like the roots of a tree and bore into our dimension. These cryptoliths were planted here by Zivu Wrath and her high celebrant in an attempt to raise an army in Savathun's absence. Now this is something the Hive know all too well with Oryx's power to take an army of his own, it seems his sisters are doing the same, or at least Zivu here. These cryptoliths were essentially brainwashing devices that would corrupt and mutate creatures that came within their radius. And some of these enemies would be heavily mutated, for example the Fallen would rip off their own arms or they would get ripped off, and the Cabal were said to have Blade's tendril mutations jutting out from the gaps in its armor. Osiris does mention Wrathborn infecting Cabal, which we haven't seen up to this point. Now if you remember back from the beginning of the season in the trailer, we did see a little cutscene clip where he was surrounded by some Cabal, but nothing as of yet has been released. Kaidal scouts noted unsettling discoveries among the Red Legion stranded in the system. Entire encampments abandoned. Evidence of internal conflict. Mass graves. Whatever is going on with these hive towers, we need an answer. Now, although we don't see these in the game, it's in the lore for sure, and that's what these Wrathborn look like. Maybe they will appear different at some point, maybe if they do come back with the Witch Queen expansion or something like that, but the season here is near its end, if not already when this video is posted, and it seems like they look like just the normal enemies we've been facing, just called Wrathborn. Now this is kind of genius if you think about it from the Hive perspective. Zivu Wrath did this to raise an army, we have to assume she already had some forces at her disposal already, right? But being the Hive God of War, she didn't really lose any of her current Hive here besides the High Celebrant, of course. Basically all she did was plant these Cryptoliths around the system, spawn these new bloodthirsty infected monsters to do the work for her, and just sit back and wait. We knew Sabathun was a trickster, but it seems the sisters do have something in common after all. Now I'm not 100% sure if these can infect humans directly, but it seems something like this may have happened with a warlock that tried to cut open a cryptolith. This comes from the Warlock Wild Hunt entries, and it says this. Trin stepped forward and ungloved her hand. She presented her palm to the onyx-colored metal spires. Something quivered within and came alive. This warlock then began experiencing visions from this cryptolith, as if it was rewriting her thoughts and beliefs, explaining the ways of the Wrathborn and Zivu Wrath. So you can think of this or compare it to something like getting a song stuck in your head. You can't get it out, or maybe some type of quote or something like that, and it just plays on repeat. It seems like some type of method to make the user go insane, which essentially they did with the Wrathborn. I decided to examine the structure more closely. But I'm certain I... I heard something. Calling to me. Beckoning. 
It does seem likely that this was the first step and then it would progress further until the creature was mutated into something new and now just another servant to her cause. In the Warlock's case, it looks like it didn't get too worse, they just experienced some visions and things like that. Here's what the end of the lore for that set has to say. Revival kept the name at bay only for so long. She came to know the name through its persistence, Zivu Arath. It would knock her down many times, but she had always found the ritual of writing oneself uplifting. This would not bury her, for she still had much to do. So this is good news for guardians and possibly humans as well. Imagine if instead of the dreaming city in the Tangled Shore, it was Earth and one of these cryptoliths was hidden in the city, infecting everyone. That could be pretty bad in the setup for a giant hive expansion. These wrathborn creatures have caused so much chaos on different worlds. Osiris lost his ghost on the moon, the spider used the crow to investigate their whereabouts further, and then we went in to save the day once again, hunting down wrathborn and defeating Zivu's head honcho, the High Celebrant. Remember, the Celebrant must be killed in the Ascendant Plane. Destroy it, and you will deal Zivu a wrath, a crippling blow. Right. No celebrant, no cryptoliths. No cryptoliths, no wrathborn. Let's see her fight us without an army. To think you can enter this plane using nothing but dead essences. Zivor Wrath strikes where Sabathun first pushed through the veil and entered the Dreaming City. Has she no ambition of her own? But this doesn't appear to be the end, at least for now. The Wrathborn are still out there to hunt until the end of the season, I'm assuming, and Zivu is still out there planning her future attacks once more, with her sister Savathun just lurking in the shadows. Now myself, I wonder if we're going to see these in future expansions with those mutate versions, or if this was just a one-time thing for these seasons, and they're just described more epically in the lore. We also have two more triumphs still needed to obtain the Warden title that are not out yet at the time of making this video, so something most likely is going to happen between now and the end of the season, possibly involving the secret areas in the EDZ with the Hawkmoon stuff. Anyway, Guardians, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Wrathborn, sort of explaining what they are, how dangerous they could be, and some of the events that took place over this season. If you'd like to see some more videos just like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, my name's Evade, and I'll catch you, Guardians, in the next one.